After the Toronto Maple Leafs drop another Game 7 to the Boston Bruins in overtime, NHL insiders have reported that the Toronto Maple Leafs are looking to make serious changes. We're going to get into this, some UFAs and RFAs, and a game reaction to what we just watched. We'll get into this later on this episode. Before I start, I just want to say to thousands of you watching that aren't subscribed, if you're enjoying this content and you never want to miss another episode, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. We'll be here all season long, giving you updates from all around the league. But with that, let's hop straight into the first topic today, which I don't even really want to talk about. Leafs drop Game 7. Now, obviously, Toronto fans, Boston fans, Habs fans, if you're here to laugh at us, the Toronto Maple Leafs drop yet again another overtime Game 7 to the Boston Bruins. They lose 2-1, to one, like I said, overtime. Pass the score, the game winner, to send the Leafs home. I'm not going to talk too much on this game. I will say some noticeable guys that stood out to me. I think Matthew Nyes was outstanding this entire series. I think he had a great game. He had great chances this game. For checking hard, he looked outstanding. Guys like Joel Edmondson really stood up in games like this. He's a guy that I've absolutely loved watching. I think he was an awesome pickup from Tre Living. We've seen Matthews set up Nylander for the one goal the Toronto Maple Leafs scored. And Sam Sonoff did show flashes. And Casey, what's your thoughts on this game as a whole? Yeah, first of all, I just got to say my heart goes out to Leafs Nation. I mean, it sucks to battle back from 3-1 to one to lose in overtime in Game 7. I mean, I can't imagine how you guys are feeling right now. Me as a Montreal fan, I was rooting for you guys because I really don't like the Boston Bruins and I really wanted to see them lose. But to the game, I thought the Leafs had a really good game. They they played really well. They played hard. It was kind of a goaltender duel between Samsonov uh, and uh, Swayman, uh, but then ultimately you know at the end of the day next goal wins and Pasternak comes down and slides one in uh, under Samsonov and the Leaf season is over and like Mark said I think the guy who really stood out in this series for me was Matthew Nyes I mean he's really just shown how good of a 200 foot player he is and how good of a playmaker he is as well and I think this is something that Toronto Maple Leafs fans should really look forward to for the future also you got to talk about William Nylander obviously missing the first couple games of the season then coming in and making a big impact in this series and really helping them battle back at two game seven so this was another guy who really stood out to me mark yeah the biggest thing with this leafs team this team looked a lot different from previous years before we've seen a lot of these other teams leafs teams last year year before get frustrated not play the defensive game but this Leafs team, this touch that Brad Tre Living added to this team really showed this series. And I think the Leafs' future is looking great. The first thing I wanted to touch on before we get into the second topic, not going to go through it all. This is the Leafs' playoff record since 2003-2004. We see them advance past the first round in 2003-2004. You see the big gap of nothing there. You see them make it to the first round. Big gap of nothing again. Multiple first round losses. Obviously, they made it to the second round against the Florida Panthers last season. But it leads into the second topic, which is quite a big one. Everything is about to change for this Toronto Maple Leafs team. We've seen the report come out from Elliot Freeman on 32 Thoughts. This is the end for this group, the core four, whatever you want to call it. If they don't pull off a big comeback, this did come out last week. And since then, we're seeing the rumors fly. Obviously, the first thing a lot of fans want to look at, what they want on the chopping block, and that is the coaching staff. Sheldon Keefe, Guy Boucher, you have so many names. Manny Mahalter, that's been here for a couple of years. In my opinion, these guys won't be back. This will be the last time you see this list of five people connected to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm not saying they're bad coaches. They just do not fit the first guy on the list, Guy, who is the Leafs power play specialist, the guy that set up the power play, managed to get the team to run at 4.76% on the power play this entire series. I think it was one for 23. Whatever it was, it was terrible. Casey, what's your thoughts on the coaches? I mean, I kind of have to agree somewhat with what you're, what you're saying. I really think that there is going to be a big change coming within the coaching staff. And I really do think we may have seen Sheldon Keefe's last game uh, coaching the Toronto Maple Leafs because we know the media are just going to eat this apart. Like, you know, the Leafs lose again in Game 7. They can make it past the first round. And I think the guy that's really going to, you know, get it all pinned on him is Sheldon Keefe because obviously he hasn't been able to do what everybody wanted from this Leafs team which is 
to at least get to the Eastern Conference Finals. So, I mean, yeah, it's just a tough... Like, the Leafs are dealt, dealt a really tough hand this entire series. I mean, William Nylander being out at the beginning, then Matthews being out in the crucial games, then Joseph Wall coming in, saving the series, and then being injured for Game 7. I mean, Sam Snap did play well today, but, I mean, it's just a really tough hand you know you're dealt with in this situation obviously you know you got guys like bobby mcmahon who are out too and i mean it's just you know it's hard i guess as a coach to kind of deal with injuries and deal with this stuff on the fly in the playoffs so you kind of got to give them the benefit of the doubt there but i do kind of have to agree with what you're saying i think that sheldon keith will be gone and i don't know about the other coaches maybe uh guy boucher he might he may be gone as well but we'll have to see what happens in the coming week because i'm sure we are going to get an update on this very soon yeah because the biggest thing we've seen obviously the mike babcock era which we're not going to touch on that's going to stay completely to the side but when you do look at this screenshot you can see that sheldon keith for the past four years wasn't able to get it done this was a product of kyle dubas bringing him in he thought he was the perfect fit and obviously wasn't i think sheldon keith could be a great coach i know the sharks are circling around him but the biggest thing with this is he doesn't fit this toronto maple leafs team yes they were dealing with injuries but the thing is they can't continue to be out coached this is going to go higher up they're going to start looking at guys like brendan shanahan they're going to look at keith this management, the group, the owners of the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to want changes to be made. You can fire a coach, you can fire the vice, uh, the president, but the hardest thing is the trade players. So I think they're going to look at moving these guys out first, reevaluating, maybe going to the season. And just talking about the season, this team is going to be shook, shooken up. I mean, you look at the notable RFAs, Connor Dewar, I think he was an awesome pickup, but this will be for a different video. Nick Robertson, Noah Gregor, Timothy Lilgren. The UFAs they have is Bertuzzi, Domi, Brody, Edmondson, Giordano, Labushkin, Samsonov, Martin Jones, and Matt Murray. You can see the draft picks on the bottom as well. But honestly, Casey, looking at this list of players, would you be surprised if a lot of these guys weren't back next season? I wouldn't be surprised because this is really Brad Schilling's chance to like reshape this team and mold it into the team that he wants it to be. Obviously, we've seen a lot of that last last offseason when he was kind of brought in, but now after you know being a full year of the GM here in Toronto, getting a look at what it's like being in Toronto, being at the mecca of hockey uh, in the entire world, I really do think that Brad Trilliving is going to mold this team into the team he wants, bring a more West Coast vibe to this team, which we did see this season. I think there'll be more of that impact next season. I do think that we see Domi brought back. I really think that he proved himself in this playoffs to, you know, maybe secure himself a, a contract for next season. But I do totally agree. I think a lot of players that you just named out are, are probably going to be gone. And it'll be interesting to see with the money they have, what, what they do this offseason. Yeah, because the biggest thing is, like you said, Brad Trey Living wants to make an impact on this team. Just looking at this list, I mean, Connor Dewar, want to talk about him quickly. This was a guy that Brad Trey Living brought in at deadline. I think he was an awesome four checker on this fourth line. I think he made his impact. And this is a guy that Trey Living brought in and was a huge part of this playoff run. You can see guys like Domi, Bertuzzi. Obviously, Bertuzzi didn't have the series we were expecting. But Max Domi was by far and away the most impressive pickup Brad Trey Living made this entire season. He bleeds blue. He wants to be here. This is a guy you back the brink truck up for. You bring him back no matter what. Joel Edmondson was a guy that Brad Trey Living picked up. Labushkin. Two of these guys were another two surprising uh, pieces that they added. Labushkin was one of statistically the best players the Toronto Maple Leafs had on defense this entire seven-game series. Edmondson, other than not being able to put a puck into the ocean, was outstanding on the defensive end. We've seen him really step his game up on this third pairing. And just Treliving's ads is making me excited for what he does an entire season when they have roughly that $19 million to work with. You obviously have guys like TJ Brody coming off the book and everything like this. And obviously the biggest topic is who do they trade out of the core for? Obviously we've seen Elliot Freeman say that something is going to give. This is the end for this group if they don't pull off a big comeback. When you look at this, most of the core four or core five, whatever you want to call them at this point, it doesn't even matter, is on a no movement clause. Austin Matthews, John Tavares, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, and Morgan Riley are 
five guys that are currently on a no movement clause. This could mean, I'm just using it as an example. They look at Mitch Marner and say, hey, we'd like to trade you to the Vegas Golden Knights. He could look at them and say, no, I don't want to. Then you're stuck with a contract like this. On the bottom, you can see the modified no trade clause. David Kemp, Yarn Croak, and Jake McCabe. Jake McCabe, shout out, because he had a hell of a playoff series. I thought him and Benoit were the best pairing we had in quite some time. It's just a complete shutdown. Obviously, Pasta was shut down by him, and they weren't out for his final goal in OT. But other than that, looking at this list, it's going to be hard to shake this core up. You're either not going to get the value, or you're not going to be able to move some of these players. And KC, looking at this list, would you be surprised if some of these players just kind of looked at Trill and said, no, I don't want to move? I wouldn't be shocked. I really expect it to happen, really. I think these guys want to play with each other, and I don't think that none of them are going to get traded. I mean, with the no-movement clause, it's kind of hard to trade these guys if they don't want to go. And, like, when you look at this list, like, you got Austin Matthews, William Nylander. Obviously, you're not trading these guys. These guys have been some of your best players, if not your best players this season. So these guys are completely off the list. You're not even going to look at trading them, in my opinion. The only guy that you really kind of look at is maybe Mitch Marner. And like you said, Mitch Marner isn't going to go to the Chicago Blackhawks. He isn't going to go to the San Jose Sharks. He's only going to go to a team that he thinks are in a similar situation where Toronto is, where they can win a Stanley Cup. And even then, you need to work with the $11 million cap that he has. So it's really going to be tough to trade these guys, which I really don't expect that they it will happen. I know a lot of you Leafs fans want it to happen, but I can't see it happening anytime soon. So I think the co I think honestly, in my opinion, as an outsider looking in at the Toronto Maple Leafs, I think the core is fine. Like, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but I do think the core is fine. I think it's just getting a fresh face behind the bench to kind of craft these core four, core five guys into a winning team is really what this team needs. And I really do think that's what Brad Trilliving is going to do and the Toronto Maple Leafs organization is going to do over this, I guess, next couple of weeks. And I'm just really excited to see where the future of uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs go. I really love uh, Brad Trilliving at the helm as GM, and I really do think he's going to make this team uh, into a, a a really, really good playoff team for next season. Like Mark said, I mean, you got Benoit and and McCabe, who guys who just played their butts off in this series and were blocking shots, they were laying hits, they were crushing people. These are the type of defensemen that Brad Living loves, and I think we're going to see more of that brought in this offseason. The biggest thing is, talking on like just defensemen and stuff, I know a lot of people get Brad Living a lot of flack for the John Klingberg signing. This was a guy that obviously didn't go up to expectations, but the one thing I noticed from this Leafs defense was they needed that one X-factor defenseman to step up have that shot, set plays up. I mean, we've seen Hampus Lindholm tie the game and then set up the incredible pass to David Pasternak. You need an offensively gifted guy. Yes, Morgan Riley can do this. Timothy Lilgren can show flashes. Jake McCabe scored a goal, but you don't have this one quarterback that could have changed this power play. So I don't want anyone in the comments to be like, hey, Brad Living sucks. He's hit on one of his five people he signed. No, he missed out on a guy that ended up being injured. Going back to just talking about these no movement clauses and everything like this before I get completely sidetracked. Like you said, when you're looking at this list, Matthews is off a fresh extension. William Nylander is off a fresh extension. Riley is signed for multiple years. The two guys with the no movement clause that have one year left on their deal, John Tavares, Mitch Marner, John Tavares is getting up on age. If you trade a guy like this, you're not getting value. He's your captain. He will take a shorter term and a lower cost. We've seen Bergeron do it for Boston. This is a guy that you're not going to move. So I'm not sitting here and saying, hey, Mitch Marner has to be traded, but he is the odd man out if they do make a change. But what's your guys' thoughts on all this? It's a lot to take in. I'm sure no one's happy. I'm sure no one's having a fun Saturday night. I mean, I wasn't after that game. But that'd be it for this episode of Hattrick HQ. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to go down, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Share this with your friends. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. So take care.